and I got eight points. Psalm 18, 2. Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Psalm 18, 2. Who can do everything? We call baseball players who can hit for average, hit for power, run, throw, field, a five-tool player. I'm a five-tool, I got a five-tool garage. I got a hammer, screwdriver, pliers, wrench, and another screwdriver. I need a lot more than that, really, to be <laughs> But I'm a five-tool player, too. But unfortunately, not in baseball. You know, a, the best baseball players... A five-tool player only hits a home run every 20 at-bats. He gets thrown out running the bases 10 to 20 times a season. He also throws to the wrong base from time to time and fails to throw runners out from time to time. He makes an error trying to field the ball at least 5 to 25 times a season. So he may have the talent to do everything, but no human can do everything right. No human can do it all. No man-made thing has all the answers. But there is one who does everything because only he can. This increasingly ungodly, self-determined, demonic world in which we live in today needs to understand that our Lord is and who our Lord is. We need to learn that Jesus is and who Jesus is. First of all, the Lord is our rock, it says in Psalm 18.2. The Lord is my rock. Psalm 62.6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. That's where we get the song, I shall not be. I shall not be moved. 2 Samuel 22.2. And he said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. Rock stands for one who cannot be moved by any force. Rock means one who cannot change or be changed. Rock means one who stands for truth and righteousness. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. We sing that song. Better to build our lives on a rock than on the shifting sand, isn't it? Better to be in the cleft of the rock in a safe place, a safe abode where God is. Better to build our lives on the powerful, unchanging truth of God than on the shifting sands of man's opinion and trends. We build our lives on the popular trends of the day. A rock deflects all attempts to damage it. You know that. You ever try to uh, destroy a rock? Uh, nobody in here has been on the rock pile in prison. I hope not. Maybe I should go back to that. Uh, if you're working at the federal prison, some of these guys, maybe we can uh, put in the rock pile. That'll go over well, wouldn't it? You know who they put on the rock pile? The administration, and let the prisoners watch them. I mean, that's, they've got all the rights, don't they? Our God is our rock in the, this world of shifting sands of truth and morality. Truth and morality is shifting, but our God is a rock. His Word is a rock. It's not going to change. A rock deflects heat and abuse. You can beat some rocks for hours, and you can't even make a dent in them. Oh, how we need truth and courageous people to stand up for the truth today. We need rocks in our society today. We need people who are going to stand up for the truth of the Word of God. Maybe that's the reason uh, they can't get enough referees. You know, they can't get enough referees in Kentucky high school basketball today because there are so many who abuse them and threaten them. Back in the day when I played and, and I... Uh, Grew up, people hurled insults at referees. They did, wow, they'd even walk on the floor and deck referees. Referees back then, they didn't care. They called it anyway. I saw it. I as a guy, top row, I knew high school back in the 60s. A guy came from, we don't know where he came from. He was a Jude. We know that. He came, <laughs> well, he was. He came from the top row, deck, knocked the officials. Flat on it, they're standing up for a free throw, lined up for a foul shot. This guy charges out of the stands, knocks the official on his hind end, and turns and goes back up in the stands like nothing happened. Here's the referee's days. Everybody's looking around, who did it? Who did it? He was so fast. He just went back and sat down, just enjoying the game. The officials, finally, the other official said, I think he came from up there. This was the fastest man. He was 
the flash had nothing on him. Anyway, they finally got him out of there. And he said, why did you do that? I just felt like I needed to. All was good. The referee didn't quit. Nobody else got mad. But today, we can't get people to referee because officials that referee can't stand the heat. They can't stand the heat and the abuse. Maybe that's why the churches are so empty today. Maybe that's why the, so many have dropped out of church in America and in Europe today. They can't stand the heat and the abuse of people who heap abuse on them for believing the Bible, for believing that homosexuality is a sin, for believing what the Bible says. You're going to be abused. Can you take it? You can if you're founded. Your life is based and founded upon the rock. Our rock can stand the heat, and we can too if we follow Him. Secondly, the Lord is our fortress. Psalm 18.2 The Lord is my rock and my fortress. For Thou art my rock. Psalm 31.3 And my fortress. Therefore, for Thy sake, lead me and guide me. Psalm 91.2 I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Fortress means a place of safety and security. Fortress means a place of safety and security. We can turn to our God and His Word and know that we have the truth and we are safe to trust in it and in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth of God and therefore is the truth about everything else. He is the source of everything. He sustains everything. I think of the lonely Ford outposts in the Old West that settlers would rush to as they are chased by the enemy. They knew they would be safe from attack inside the fort or fortress. We are safe from all attacks when we are in the fortress of God who is Jesus Christ. Where is our place of safety when everything goes wrong? Drugs or Jesus. You remember that song? Drugs or Jesus. Your drug can be alcohol, sex, pills, dope, partying, playing, writing, running, working, ignoring the obvious. But God forbid that we would ever turn to Jesus and His Word it's just not enough in today's modern society. Now, I'm not against medication. I, I do what the doctors tell me. But I also have a great physician. We sung the song, The Great Physician, this morning. That's who I trust in today. He is my fortress. What or who is your fortress today? Thirdly, the Lord is our deliverer. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Deliverer is, is one who rescues us from danger and trouble. God delivered His people and He will surely deliver us. He comes to us when we sorely need Him. He will not leave us nor forsake us. Though all of our family and friends leave us and forsake us, He will never leave thee nor forsake thee. We are safe in the arms of Jesus. The post office delivers mail from being... Uh, mail, I've been to these large uh, sectional centers. They call them sectional centers and uh, been to Louisville, uh, Lexington. Huge amounts of mail comes in Louisville. I was in that post office many, many times doing audits and watching them work mail. And my, I always came away saying, God bless them. How do they ever get a piece of mail delivered? It comes in in hampers. Hundreds of hampers full of letters. I mean, shouldn't tell you this. You'll never mail a letter again. They dump it on the conveyors. And of all that mess, all that confusion, it comes out after about a 30-minute process into a little tray all neat and stacked going to Inez, Kentucky, or Paintsville, or Tomahawk, wherever. Listen, that's what God does for us. He delivers us from all the confusion all the, it just can't happen. Every time I would go in Louisville, I'd say, oh no, how does this happen? It's a mess. You know me, I, I like order. They take the chaos and turn it into order. I love to go to where the, see the finished product because I have to go there first, reassure myself. Then they put in a magazine sorting machine and threw magazines in a big pile. I said, this is going to, pages are going to be torn, everything. They've got a machine in Louisville and every, all across the country that can gently handle it has little blowers and fans that make sure it gets all put back. Everything's fine. Nothing gets wrinkled. Nothing gets torn. Magazines. And it runs them through a machine, scans them. No, no human hand touches them until it sorts it in the end going to INES. 
or tomahawk. It's amazing, the technology. You know, the only thing we cannot, I'm retired, but the only thing, I still say we, they don't say we, they don't like me anymore. Uh, they have to pay me for nothing. That's a great gig. They pay me to sit at home and stay away. The only Retirement's great. The only thing, you have to be old to get it. That's the only bad thing. The only thing they can't work on these machines are newspapers. Newspapers will tear. They cannot. They've never figured out how to put a newspaper through automation because the, the paper. And they've made it thinner and thinner because they're trying to save money. And uh, it's almost impossible. So what do I get assigned every time I go to Louisville? I don't get the automated machines where you can sit there and watch letters go. I don't get that. Good thing. But actually, you just sit there and watch your phone all night because you've got nothing to do unless something breaks down. But I get assigned the newspaper section. I, for they're working newspapers for the whole United States. I get to watch 20 people sort newspapers all night. You talk about boring. Starting at 11 o'clock in the evening till 7 o'clock in the morning. I have to watch them. I have to measure. I have to make sure they're all there. One leaves. I've got to say, where's he going? I don't know. He does this every night. He'll come back sometime about three hours. Well, he can't do that. Well, good luck finding him in this place. Well, where's your all's hiding place? I'm not telling you. Anyway, that was boring. But the Lord takes all of our confusion and mess and He delivers us. I think of the post office every time I see this verse because they take all the confusion of the massive pile of letters and magazines and delivers them perfectly. And that's what our God does for us. Perfectly delivers us. He'll deliver us to heaven perfectly because He is God and He has saved us and bought us by His blood. And He will send us and get us to heaven perfectly. Don't you fret or fear. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, <coughs> He will get you there. Fourthly, the Lord is our strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength. He gives us the ability and the power to do what we never thought we could do. He gives us special power and might when we need it and not before. He is our defender who looks out for us. It's like having a strong bodyguard with you wherever you go. It's like having a Herbert Lee with you. I had Herbert Lee with me all through high school and 8th grade. Meanest, toughest boy in school, but he liked me. And nobody messed with me. I would say, I can say anything to anybody. Nobody messes. I can smart off to the meanest boy in high school. Nobody says a word to me. And I think, oh yeah, Herbert Lee's around here somewhere and they know it. He would go... Nuts on people if they bothered me. He was a wonderful person. Obviously. <laughs> no, he's a good guy, though. Good guy. Well, see, when he, he was very poor and he would come to my house all summer, he'd practically stay with me. My mom would feed him. We would give him things. And I loved Herbert Lee. We just, we just hung out. And he wouldn't let nobody. He was my strength. See, I didn't have it. But He did. That's what God does for us. We don't have the strength, but He does. So when Satan gets ready to say, I'm going to lambast them today, oops, there's God right with them. There's their, the Spirit of God guarding their hearts. I cannot penetrate their hearts like I want to. The Spirit of God. And their Bible reading. Oh, he hates it when you read the Bible. That's your strength too. He hates it when you read the Bible and spend time in prayer. I wish they'd quit reading the Bible. They're getting fortified. They're getting stronger. We're strong because He is strong. We read the Word of God because it's His Word and He is strong. We pray to Him who is strength. We can pray to a chair. Is that going to do you any good? We can pray to these false gods. You might as well pray to, pray to a chair. Let's pray to Muhammad or Allah or Muhammad Allah. That's where he got his name, what? Muhammad Ali. Yeah, but I, I now know it more than ever. It was God who defended us. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me, Philippians 4.13. And fifthly, the Lord has our trust. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. Will you trust in God? We can trust in God. We can always trust in God. But we've decided 
We have to decide to trust in Him. That's where the words, I will trust. We don't automatically trust. That's why this passage says, in whom I will. It's a part of the will, of the desire, of the choice. We have a choice to trust in God or not. The Bible says in Acts 4, 12, there is none other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. So we can trust in God's Word, the Bible, God's plan of salvation, and God's man, Jesus Christ. We can trust in God's plan of salvation and God's man, Jesus Christ. The Lord has our trust. Does He or does He not? Does He have your trust? It's up to you. This is the only part of this passage where it says, I will. The part of the human will is whether we're going to trust God or not. Sixthly, the Lord is our buckler. What is a buckler? The buckler is a shield. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler. It's a shield. God shields us from the enemy. It doesn't mean the enemy won't attack and won't be successful at times. A shield protects the head and vital organs while the enemy might strike a blow to the legs or feet and even the arms, he cannot destroy us nor can he defeat us as long as we have our shield of faith. As the Bible calls it in Ephesians 6.16, our shield of faith. We trust in God. Buckler means our faith. The Lord is our faith because He's the object of our faith. Your faith is only as strong as the object you put it in. If I put, y'all put faith in these chairs this morning, these pews that they'll hold you up. That's faith. We put our faith, that's not blind faith. You know these chairs will hold you up because it's done it before and you know it'll do it again. You know these chairs will hold, your pews will hold you up. You don't have a doubt. That's the way God, you know God can protect you. You know God is your shield. You know God will take care of you. You know He will not let you fall. We are... So glad we have a shield. You know, Captain America carries a shield in the comic books. It kept him from the fatal blows of the enemy. But it also used it as a weapon to deflect his enemy's attacks back on them. Our shield of God, our faith, protects us, but it also allows us to plan an attack. You know, as the soldier holds a shield up and protects him from arrows, he's planning his attack. You just don't hunker down. Soldiers didn't just hunker down and say, Oh, oh this shield... No, you fight, you charge, keeping the shield up. That's what we do as Christians, we ought to do, keeping the shield of faith up, but attacking. The sword is our weapon in Ephesians chapter 6. It's the only offensive weapon mentioned in that passage about the uh, sword, about the fighting for the faith. It's the only weapon mentioned. So we use the shield to guide us and protect us, but we use the sword to fight. We don't hunker down. God does not want us to hunker down and cowardice to this world today. He wants us to fight the fight of faith. We're not going to give in. We're going to keep preaching the gospel. We're not going to change. If they tell us, Jack, this church, you know, there's a law they're considering California that if you do not support the LGBT community, you will lose your nonprofit status. So what? That means they'll start taxing us, taxing our property. Call us a business instead of a church. Start uh, uh, doing all kinds of things. They can do whatever they want to then. Close you down if they don't like you. So be it. We're not going to change anything. Psalm 18.2, number 7. The Lord is our salvation. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, and the horn of my salvation. Horns, think of a rhinoceros. Horns, think of deer and elk. Horns are emblems of power. You know, guys, you're going to hunt deer this year. You see those big antlers, those big horns. You think, wow, I want the one with the biggest horn. That's a powerful deer. You certainly wouldn't want to run into it. And uh, a unicorn. A unicorn? Did I say unicorn? A rhinoceros. Unicorns. There's debate whether they exist or not. Some say they actually did exist. Uh, don't matter to me. Uh, but I certainly don't want to... Not afraid of a unicorn... Certainly am afraid of a rhinoceros, so they're supposed to be fierce. Uh, some guy was telling me about our read on Facebook. That's what it was, because that's the real truth. Isn't it? Facebook said the five dumbest things ever done. One of the, the top number one thing was this man brushing a rhinoceros's teeth. Was that you, Kelly? Told me. Okay, so it ain't true. Kelly told me. Anyway, the, <laughs> a man brushing a rhinoceros's teeth. Now that's kind of crazy. When a hippo. That's what it was. Hippo. Hippo, brushing, brushing a hippo's teeth. And I think, that is 
And one of them was what, Kelly? An alligator? Uh, snake pit? Alligator? Yeah, in an alligator pit, snake pit. But the dumbest was the uh, hippo, brushing the hippo's teeth. When its jaws could crush you just with a little bit of a bite. The horn of my salvation. God is the power behind our salvation is what it means. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot pay our sin debt to God, nor can we keep ourselves safe. We don't have the power, <clears throat> but God does. Therefore, He is the horn, the power of my salvation, because it's based on His power and wisdom revealed in and because of Jesus Christ. It's because of Christ and the power of God that we can be saved at all. He is the power of our salvation. And eighth, the last one. The Lord is our high tower. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. David, David fled to and hid in, high in the rocks in caves of the mountains when he escaped in the hands of, by the hands of Saul, trying to escape from the hands of Saul. David here compares God as a high tower to such a place of concealment and security. David fled to this place of concealment and security in the mountains. Believers are often hidden in their God from the strife of this world. Did you know that? High tower means we're hidden from the world. All sins are hidden behind the blood of Jesus Christ. He's our high tower. Our sins are hidden behind the blood of Christ. Outlaws fled to the rocks in high places. You watch these old westerns. Where do these dummies run to? In the rocks in the high places. The only problem is they usually get shot and fall off, right? Well, they might have recovered from a gunshot, but not if they fall. Uh, sins are hidden. Kings hid their families in a high tower to keep them from the enemy arrows. Did you know that? That's why these old castles had high towers. The king would put his family there to protect them so the arrows couldn't reach. Or the catapults. That's what it means. A place of safety. God places us in a place of safety when we trust in Jesus Christ. The enemy cannot reach us anymore. We've trusted Christ. Our sins are forgiven. We're covered by the blood. The enemy cannot reach us anymore. He is our high tower. <clears throat> Today we look at the enemies all around us and we know we're safe in the high tower of God through Jesus Christ and our faith and trust in Him. Conclusion. You didn't think I'd get here this fast, did you? 1 John 4 eight. He that loveth not knoweth not God. Who is the Lord? For God is love. God is love. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is quick. What is the Word of God? For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me, let me break it down to you very simply. Hebrews 11.6 for without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. Who is the Lord? He just is. That's what we believe. That's what we must believe. What does that mean? He is. It means He exists eternally. No beginning, no ending. He reigns. He is King. He is all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He is Creator. He is Lord. He is my friend. And He's your friend if you know Jesus Christ. He is for me, not against me. He is Savior. And He is Jesus. Amen. Let's pray.